I want to go through the photos here of signs of damage and I want to compare how the photos and the damage line up on the Canadian disaster database. There are many theories as to why there would be so many signs of damage to begin with. So I'm just going to copy that number and paste it back into the library. Damage cement stack at poor Colburn cement plant. This one has no information except damage cement stack for Colburn. 1971, January 12th. Accidents, factories, and industries for Colburn. This log starts September 11th, 1900, and they have not uploaded or updated anything since November 15, 2020. So 1971, January. So 1970, end of 1970, I will accept. August 4th, a moderately severe geomagnetic storm caused disruptions in communications and power services throughout Canada and US. Let's just copy paste that. Let's see if anything, if there's any information. Site can't be reached. So I can't find any information on why this stack has fallen. The last time I pointed out, for some reason I just, it feels like it's been sitting there for a while. Just the way that there's like all these sediments on top of it. So I'm looking on the inside and outside of the stack itself. And I don't, here, let me look up cement storage silo. Okay. Yeah, this doesn't help me at all. So the reason why I wanted to see that was these are like sections of bricks, okay? Unless these are part of the base of this, somehow, somewhere, or were somehow stored inside of the cement silo, then that tells me that they're part of a different building. Maybe whatever's going on over here. Move random wood over there. I don't know if they, like, near the top of the pillar had the little thing you can walk around on. That thing crumpled, okay? I'm also fascinated by this wall because I see bricks See a little brick pattern. The closer it gets up to the top, this is really inconsistent, broken. I can see through the other side. Is this paper that's melting? What kind of fence would that be? This is like painted up there. And the way that this is reflecting, it's almost like that's like a puddle of water or something. Who knows? If it's just a damaged cement stack with no other information, then that's an interesting photo. I wonder what happened. I don't see how there would be a force that would fling these rocks up here unless there was an explosion all right number two condemned niagara fruit man magazine building in saint david's so this is one of those where they don't give us a date they just let us know when it was created and when it was modified whatever that means i have no information about when this photo was taken but there's a cute little story wait this is what is google arts and culture arts and culture google so is this like a google funded history website this one doesn't even have a building beside it and if this is condemned but this looks like a rebuilt I'm gonna do a side by side, but let me just read their little story. The Woodruff Lowry General Store was built by Richard Woodruff around 1812 and was one of two in St. David's at the time. During War of 1812, his shop was occupied by the Americans and used as a commissary. It was burned along with the village in 1814. The business was eventually rebuilt where it was under the operation of George Woodruff until 1893. Eventually, the building would house the Niagara Fruitman magazine and the Growers Monthly. The building was torn down along with many of the older buildings in the village when major road widening occurred in the 1960s. Hold on, let's take a look at this photo. I'm looking for different layers and changes in texture. Why is the stop sign facing us specifically? It's like telling me to stop. Oh wow, look at that. That's all burned right there. Beautiful power lines right there. That might just be where that meets the road. You know, I got a little ding there and a ding there. Um, unless it's super shady, like literal shade, then there's a difference right there. Hold on, let's see where the sun is. The sun's more on this side, I can tell by the shadow being over there. Unless this drops down immediately, which it might because I see more of the bottom right there. But there's like a cutoff, like they just fixed a front layer of a random street on top of it all. Let's turn on my brightness too. Oh, that's amazing. Imagine the whole time they were just using like AI autofill on these photos. Because look, you can see the square of the door right there. But they can also just cut and fill these with whatever they want. Do, 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 do. All that tells me is that they could have cut a rectangle and like put it on top of that. Let me see 
see what's going on here. These have the same slant in the middle. There's no date provided here, but this is a completely different bottom. Where this was connected, this bar went completely over into the other building. Where did it go? This bottom might be a cover. This broken part sticking down is still the exact same. The same kind of patchy bricks. This one ends right there. This one, the front door goes much lower. Or the front window part right here. So this random document says that this photo that I'm looking at is circa 1960. As of the Niagara on the Lake Museum 2014. So this doesn't say when this photo was taken. Because it's final name was the Niagara Fruitman magazine. It would have been at some point after 1893. Then what I'm wondering what caused it to look like this though. During the War of 1812, his shop was occupied by the Americans using the commissary. It was burned along with the village 1814. It was rebuilt. So why is there no photos of it being like built and beautiful? What is this? Is it supposed to be a building photo? No. There's no photos of this building being in use. Alright, our third photo. American Can Company damage after the cyclone of September 11th, 1920. I'm gonna look that up. But also I'm gonna see on the database. So the only thing listed is March 17th, 1920. And then comments down here would be associated with that. We had a flood. But what about the cyclone? Niagara Falls Library. Cyclone wreaked havoc on Niagara Falls in 1920. On September 11th. Okay. This is certainly the cyclone they're talking about. So this article was released by Special to the Niagara Falls Review. Wait, by Special? What does that mean? How am I supposed to reference an article that was written by Special? Friday, September 20th, 2019. It was a Saturday afternoon on September 11th, 1920, that the devastating weather struck. Some say it was a tornado, others call it a cyclone. Then why wasn't it in the database? The cyclone confined itself to a pathway of approximately 1,000 feet wide that ran from Niagara Falls Center to the north end of Victoria Park. It then leapt across the Niagara River to Goat Island before returning back to Canada and following the Niagara River Parkway to Chip Unfortunately, monumental property damage occurred throughout the city. The American Can Co. on Lewis Avenue was the hardest hit by the massive storm. Employee accounts recall a stunning crash with a blinding flash of lightning before the roof of the factory was blown completely off. All told, damages to the plant totaled $20,000, which would amount to over $230,000 today. Hundreds of trees were felled by the storm and many park staff worked diligently to clear up the wreckage. Many visitors in the park scrambled to take refuge from the storm as their picnic tables were smashed to match wood. Who are they quoting? Newspaper accounts estimated that 1,500 to 2,000 large trees were either demolished or uprooted. Initial attempts were made to reroot and rebed the larger healthy trees, but efforts proved to be too costly. It was later said the cleanup was so effective, within weeks of the storm, you couldn't detect the loss of trees on the island. I mean, that's heartbreaking. Thank you, special. Okay, what else? Cyclone wreaked havoc. It, what is this? Item, title, date, newspaper article with photo. Where is it? We tried. I can't find any uh, evidence of a cyclone happening September 11th, 1920. We can look at this photo, which I think we looked at before. So this is supposed to be a cyclone. We got a bunch of broken stuff. Not sure what this is supposed to be. This is completely boarded up already. We got this fancy top here. This building doesn't have a window there anymore. There's a hole there. All these pretty houses in the Hold on, buddy. What building is this? Please remind me. American Can Company. Did their boss not even let them take a day off? Because that thing is chugging. Wait, but everything is broken and destroyed, but it's still running. Also, those are some drawn trees. Do, do, let's just do that. Perfect. Just draw that in. It's a good one. Is that snow or water? I don't know. Great photo. Captain Clifford Keach aboard the burnt out remains of the Maid of the Mist boat. Date 1955, April 22nd. All right, we got 55. It starts at event type. Hold on. This is July 1st, 1955. More than 100 forest fires burned longer than four weeks. On August 4th, there were 150 fires. That would have been like three months before the forest fires hit. This 
this dude is just a completely different contrast than everything behind him. So let me just see what happened here. The Maid of the Mist boats were being prepared for the season. A spark from a welder's torch set both ablaze. You guys just let it burn because the whole thing's burned up. You're telling me there was not one fire extinguisher within arm's reach from a welder on the dock where they're like in the water. That's kind of cheeky, he's smoking a cigarette. But I, I have a feeling obviously he's not there. This is just a photo of the damage and they just like cut him in and put him in there. What a guy. Clifford. The boat was set ablaze. Nobody put it out. And somehow, like, a whole entire fence is right there. Demolition of National Grocers Building, circa 1950. But when I look it up, I find this interesting timeline. Niagara Falls Heritage.ca has this laid out. So apparently, this is the only blurb that is available. So it says Mr. Marlon Woolno built this wholesale grocery and importing business in the early 1900s. It became became known as the National Grocers Warehouse. After the warehouse moved to a new location, a travel inn motel was built on the original building foundations. I can't find any news articles or anything referencing the demolition, except for right here, demolition of National Grocers Building. Okay, let's start from the beginning. So this is the Marlon Woolno Company Wholesale Grocers circa 1910. I love this photo. So I want to take note of how the corners of this building are just flat, kind of right angles, really short ledge there. And the tiers go down one, two, three, four. We have some windows on the ground. I don't know if that's foliage or grass that's kind of up on the windows. We've got these houses in the back, this shed that's really close. But here, what it kind of looks like to me is that there were other tracks. I could be wrong, but it looks like maybe there were old tracks that were built over. It, this also says medical discovery. What does that mean? But anyway, there's like a little train there and the tracks go over here, built into the sidewalk and it's gonna end right there. This one kind of ends there. You don't see any more of it. Here, I don't know if that's a hole in the ground. Got a little path. I take note of the windows and the decorations above them and these little arches here and the points on them. And notice the angle of the building too. This seems to be the only angle that they show us. So if I go back, and then I click next. The Marland Woolno Company Wholesale Grocers. Okay, so this is just a random other photo. So here's the first one. Here's the second one. Pretty much the exact same angle. I'm gonna click it open in a sec. But notice how the top of this is beautiful. And the tiers are one, two, three, four. And then here. I'm assuming this photo was taken after. And the tiers go one, two, three, four. But there's an extension here that goes right back up. And we have more windows windows in the ground. Uh, this has turned into a truck. You can see the difference in the color right there. The shed that was close up here has been replaced by this building. The same stuff around the window, except right here, this arch seems to end with a perfectly straight line. Not sure why. That just doesn't seem accurate to me. I guess that's supposed to be the shadow from here. This seems to have been repaired. Wait, where's the building that said medical discovery? Medical discovery. It's gone. But we still have the same, like, we've got, see that? We've got the same pole going on. The thing is, this is supposed to be circa 1910, but they've left that little chimney part, that little thing there, which is sticking out here. But it seems like they tried to, like, erase or draw over all that beautiful stuff. So all this has changed, but they've kept the same kind of curtains. We've got the same angle. And then we have the demolition. There's no date or information on this part. We can see there's no roof. They've taken down the windows. What I don't understand is at what point did they remove all the beautiful stuff at the top? Because there's no information anywhere about a redecorating, but it seems to have come and gone. Here there's no railing. Here there is a railing. No, the top is so beautiful here. Somehow someone climbed up there took it all down. National Grocers Grand Opening, December 19th, 1959. The grand opening was 1959, but the demolition on the Niagara Falls Public Library is dated circa 1950. So I don't know when it was actually demolished. If we look at this weird convention photo. I don't understand this overlay, but what I do understand is that his fingers are weird. Those are some weird- look, you're gonna say that's a normal bunch of fingers right in front of my face. Look at a- what is this pattern? Lucky dollar. 
by right better foods for better living at lucky dollar what's lucky dollar shop lucky dollar welcome is that an ad for a different shopping place what does this say welcome to our something something this dude doesn't really look like he's actually standing in front of this place but yeah look at the hands those are some weird you can't even tell me those are normal hands 